you all ready for me to play something, right? I believe so. Well, I got the blues. The reason why I have the blues is because I was born where the blues began. And back in the days when the blues was created, you know. So I caught the middle of it, like in the 40s, 1945 and on up. Uh, I took the blues from there all the way till now. I was born in Camden, Mississippi, way down south. And I was raised by my grandma, my uncle, and aunties. I lost my father when I was born on three years old. My sister's going on two. And my grandmother had a sharecropper down south. I picked cotton, corn. Then you don't pick corn, you pull it by hand. Then along came that corn pull and cotton picker, you know, that stuff. We didn't have to do that no more. So I got the Got out of Dodge in 1963. Came to Chicago. Yeah, my father was, uh, my mom, she uh, was young when she heard of my father and her got married, you know. My mom was 13 years old. And my dad was 15 years old. So when my mom made 15 years old, I was born. And my mom, uh, she was born in 1930. And my, my dad, 1928, I think, sure. But um, he lost his life, he was 19 years old. So I, I was raised without a father. And my mom left home when I was about six years old. She moved to Chicago. I cried like a baby all day long. That I think she bought in Cable of Illinois and I stopped crying. I remember, why come over there? They bought in Cable of Illinois. Okay, I'm through crying. I go get my book, magazine with guitars in there. I lay down on the floor, stare at the guitar, stare at the guitars all the time. So I always wanted to be a musician. So here I am, still trying to be one.
17th when I lost me yeah, and that Saturday that's when the funeral was December 17th. And so I'm walking, I'm crying, you know. I was, they said they called me a fat pig when I was young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, that's my nickname now, hey pig. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like one of you know, I was so real light as I am now, you know, I was real light as a little kid, you know, you changed a little bit. But they used to call me a yellow, little yellow pig. So I was walking down that road, man, with them, and I was crying. Wasn't no grabbers hurting my foot. I had shoes on. I was too lazy to walk. The <laughs> young, three years old, so they try to kill me, and they get tired, and all of a sudden, here comes this big black car, a guy named Bud Jack. Drive fast, he stopped, picked us up, and taking us to the church. And he was having a funeral there, and I remember that song, and that when they said that the engine is like a truck engine or something, the train blow the whistle, mm -hmm. and a blind man toned the bell. And I remember the bell, the one wave high was short, and ping, you go in the church. And I can remember, I see my dad in, in, the, in the casket. So my, my cousin picked me up and took me around so I could see him. Yeah. So, so that Sunday night, so my cousin spent the night, you know, he was about 15, 16 years old. And I woke up early that morning, and guess what? Guess who was at the foot of my bed smiling? My dad came to see me. And I said, hey, I called my, my brother in that jail. Hey, man, there's a man at the foot of my bed laughing, smiling at me. Boy, for sure, they don't, they don't buy the other day. <laughs> he, was, he was afraid too. But I remember everything, you know, all this stuff. My dad standing up on the back seat of a car. And he took, on the front seat like this, standing up in that 1949, whatever that truck, the car was for 38. He said, sit down. Don't, uh, I don't want you to fall and bump your head. I'm standing on the seat. So I had to be real short. So I can never remember where we go, though. When he come get me, he used to come up like every Sunday and get me on the bike with a stick of peppermint in the can. It's about that long, but it looked that big to me. <laughs> Sit me in that basket, and he'd leave my grandmother's house. And where did we go? I don't care. Never can remember where we went, you know. But all other stuff, I remember. But my first guitar outside the house, my grandmother's house, the one strength, and, uh, what I picked up from my uncle, they had some wire on my grandmother's broom. She don't go out. So I tap the broom, get the wire, and make me a Odile bow. Yeah. That's back and for Bo Dilly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned on the started on that. 
And then I had a cousin who played guitar down the road about three or four miles. I'd go down there all the time and mess with his guitar. And so when I got about six years old, I could play music. So I've been playing this since I was six, six years old. Started about three, four years old trying, you know. So my teacher said, hey, Primer, it's time for you to go outside. Why you don't want to go outside? I said, well, the reason why I don't want to go outside is because I do not play. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, no, no, I don't play, teacher. So she said, I went home. She made me go home. <laughs> My grandmother said, why did you come home? I told the teacher I didn't play. <laughs> oh, yeah, you sat the teacher. Said, okay, boy, she went and got one of them swing, switch, plant me off the tree. Told my brother, you don't play. I don't care, but show you what it's like. Uh, from then on, okay. I'll never do that again. My grandmother, only, uh, when I, all those years, talking about 18 years, she never, one time she, that's the only time she hit, brushed me with switch. But I had an auntie every day. I got a whooping. Oh, yeah, well, I got a whooping, man. She had blisters all on my back. Yeah, she sent us, my, my cousin, I got a cousin, you know, same age I am. We go, she come out the field and cook dinner for everybody, you know. But she sent us to the spring or to the well to get some water. We go in a hurry, we're coming back, but I know this. Before we get back, she called me. And she meet us ahead with and she just don't do nothing to her sister. Grab me and oh man, that's terrible. Oh, man. Man. That's why I'm, I like I am now, I'm a good man. And I hate to see a kid cry and somebody do a kid wrong. It's hurting me to my feeling. Because I don't I don't like that. Be nice to the kids. They're your future. They can grow up to be whatever they want to be. They can be grow up to be something or nothing. That's the way the ball's bound, you know.
for you with my heart and my hand. Cause you read it put in my mind. Hoping that you understand.
few CDs you can take home with. You got a brand new CD right there with an autograph. So I got one called Mojo. Me and Bob called Tory. Our new CD. And I got one called Soul of a Blues Man. I got one called Knocking Around These Blues. Ain't nothing you can do. All original. Blues on solid ground. Did I miss one? <laughs> Just six, right? <laughs> They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> all of them is my favorite. But I, all original is my, is my, you know, uh, I got three on my own label. I got, a, my label is a Blues House Production. So I got my own label with my seat. I do my own stuff, you know. I, I got away from all the rip off. <laughs> yeah. Contracts and, and managing all this stuff and booking agent. So my wife, she does all the booking and stuff. Manager, she do everything. The boss, everything. <laughs> <laughs> now she keep us going, I'm telling you, she does a good job. You know, we do it right out of our home, you know. Not, you know, upstairs, she lives. She wakes up at 2 o'clock, she goes. <laughs> you know, she get up early and she's going off and works all the time. It yeah. Sounds good as it is. Yeah, the best. Well, she, uh, she got tired of people ripping me off with my music, you know. So she said, hey, all you guys, what, what you guys can do for him that I can't do? Oh, I see. Hey, look So. They gave her a hard time when she started, you know. We wouldn't give her no help at all. But I see I was smart. I had all the schedules and every show that I played with Magic Slim and the Teardrop and Muddy. I kept all that tenure for all the gigs. See, I was preparing myself, you know. And while I was with Magic Slim, I recorded my own secret songs, you know. Yeah. Magic Slim gave me the first time to record on this, on this LP. So he got me started with that. My own stuff. Yeah, from then on, I've been doing my own stuff. I play on many CDs.
Inside of it, got a core inside of it, it's soft with two seeds inside of it. But it goes down like in Mississippi, you know, we just go out of the wood and pick them off the tree. They go up the tree, shake the tree, they fall. Mm. Buckets full and we eat them right off the tree. Yeah. And that's very good for you, very healthy. Yeah. <coughs> so I take these vitamins called Shackley. No pharmaceutical. Been taking those for years now, at least ten years now, and no side effects and nothing like that. And so they, you can also get that muscadine liquid. You can take a spoonful of it every day. Yeah. So go to Shackley and I'll check it out. I'll tell you, stay away from that pharmaceutical if you can. But see, it's, it's natural stuff. So go online and check it out, Shackley. Let's make you feel, you just feel natural. Yeah, when you take it, you just feel natural, not high or nothing. It's just <laughs> okay. And it's good for your skin, you know, your complexion. And, you know, yeah, it's good for all this stuff. That's why I'm 74 years old, going on 75. My birthday coming up March 5th. I'm 75 years old. So like I said, I was there when the blues was beginning. Yeah. So after that, you know, now it's at a standstill, but everybody's playing the same stuff, you know, and uh, they try to change it, but you can't change it. Not the blues, you know. They put all kind of stuff on to try to sound different foot pillows and all of those stuff, you know, wine and picking and you know, all these big guys, the stars and they buddy got all of them, they use foot pillows. But buddy can play blues if he want to. But he playing what he have to play. What he got to play, you know, he got to, you know. Well, you know, uh, me, I stick to what I know best, blues. And gospel now. I don't know, forget about it. I was raised up in the church in Mississippi. Uh, I believe, I have a lot of faith, you know. I always have faith in whatever I do. Not nervous, I don't get nervous. I don't get excited. But where I go or where I've been, I've traveled all over the world, been there, done that, seen that. So, yeah, yeah, you you happy? No, I'm just going to the same old place. I don't see them in a lot of times, you know. So I'm like, you're making one and ain't doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he get, he get bored. Okay, Steve, I'll tell you what we're How about the Steve Bell, ladies and gentlemen? Legendary family too now. No, his dad. Carrie Bill. Lou is his brother. Everybody thought Lou was his dad. But that's his big brother. But I don't know why I call his big brother, because look how big tall he is. Lou is my side. So it's Steve Bill. I've been knowing him since he was six years old. Wow. It's a long time. Now he, Oh, wow. 95 now. Really? <laughs> 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 he's taking those vitamins. Yeah, he's taking vitamins, all right. He take his vitamins. He take his vitamins. The brown stuff and the blue wash. The cognac. 
Well, you don't drink cheap whiskey, that's for sure. I like the name of the cognac. And Budweiser, oh my God, the nasty beer of the whole market. Now, it's the strongest beer Budweiser is. Yeah. What's my name? I'm John Prime, I'm Steve Bell. You record any gospel still? Uh, no, but I always played with gospel food back in the days on the west side of Chicago. Church. I haven't recorded it, but I'm thinking about it. Good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. His brother, Lurvin, he did a whole CD of gospel. <laughs> Try to get Steve to sing, but he won't sing. <laughs> he will not sing. He can do it. <laughs> yeah, he should. Do the press try. Do the tries. Really, do the press. Steve, like one of the greatest hard to play around, like the young. The young man with old ideals.
Peters. Peters got a long way to go. Yeah, I'm on our original CD, Homeland Blades. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, I go back, like when I first got to the south side and the west side of Chicago. They had a lot of music playing everywhere. All you, you walk down the street, you hear somebody, someone rehearsing in their house, playing blues or soul music or whatever, you know. And uh, that's back in the 60s. But now you don't hear that, you know. No one rehearsing. You got to go to a special play to do all. People don't do that no more in their house. And they'll sit on the porch or in the backyards and in the alley and play all that. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, it's been there. So, um, so you don't hear that stuff these days, you know. Um, you want to hear something live, you got to go out to a club, you know, and check it out. But I paid my dudes doing these things. Uh, I played behind a house band at a club called Teresa's Lounge. Yeah. 1973, going on 74. This is when I started in 1974. And uh, play with a many musicians came through there, you know. Johnny Winters, uh, Muddy Waters came through there, uh, Bernie Ray. Uh, just all the musicians in Chicago, all the old guys, they gone, they passed away now, been blues ever now. Willie Dixon. Um, I got my first uh, gig with Willie Dixon playing at uh, Teresa's Lounge, which Junior Wells was the house band. And wow. So I, 1979, I used to sing all this, these songs, Muddy singing, you know, I'm not thinking Muddy wrote all these things, but Willie Dixon was writing a lot of them chess records. And uh, so on Friday, sometimes this big guy come there and he sit right in the middle of the door with all them chills, you know, the kind of chills they had in there with like a school chills, you know, with a desk on a little thing. That's what he had in there. And he, I'd be playing all this stuff, and he'd be sitting there rocking the whole, the whole building be shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got my first passport and everything for me. I'm Willie Dixon, 1979. He needed a guitar player to go to Mexico City. I'd never been on an airplane before. So he came out of, uh, I'm looking for a guitar player, and I see you know my stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I need a guitar player to go overseas to Mexico City. Do you have a passport? I said, no, I don't have one. If you want to go, that's what I would do. I would have got the money. No, I don't have no money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll be at your house in the morning at 9 o'clock when we go downtown and get your passport because we got to leave next week and go to Mexico. Okay. <laughs> Sure. Sure enough, he came, got me, and take me downtown. I'm looking. He put a smart man, man. Feel the whole thing out for me. Go, hey, I've been. If I don't feel like, I'll tell you what, I've been in a rack somewhere. <laughs> Back then, <coughs> green on, you know. So sure enough, I got you know chance to play in this band, but like only play six six months in this band. Because they never let me sing. He knew I could sing. And the guys he had in this band would could sing their way out of paper bag. <laughs> With me and Billy Branch, which is younger in the group, and Billy wasn't doing no singing. He was playing hard back then. But his, his son, Willie Dixon's son, Freddie Dixon, played bass before Willie come up. He was singing one song. He still sang that same song right now. Yeah. 1979, same song, he's still singing. <laughs> the only good guy was, that was in the band to sing, but you know, I could, pretty, I was pretty good. Now I'm better now, but the piano player that played with him named Lafayette Leak was a very good piano player to sing. He always played with Willie Dixon. So he was singing. And the drummer, Jimmy Tillman, <laughs> Jimmy Tillman, he was a drummer. So they would never let me sing, so I just got, hey man, y'all won't let me sing, so I gotta go. But Muddy, 1980, Muddy, when we went, Muddy heard me playing with Willie. So he asked me, he said, hey, who the young man playing, playing that guitar up there? The guitar up there. And Muddy said, no, that's John Prime, he working to me. He said, I know. He said, you know what? 
That man like my, know my music. Sure enough, I did. I studied with Muddy music more than I did anybody. So, 1980, when the old band quit Muddy, Pine Top and Willie Smith and all of them, he asked for me. Willie Dixon gave him a number. He came down and got me. And I got a chance to play with Muddy before he passed away. Muddy Waters, yeah. 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 From then on, I've been going since, you know, after Muddy passed away, I just kept going. I got with a guy named Maddie Slim and Jesus Ross. But which Muddy was still sick, you know, 1980, 82. So I, I joined his band, and guess what? He needed a guitar player to go to Europe. Six weeks, 1980. So I said, okay, man, he came down and got me and said, hey, I got a guitar player. So, okay, man, I go over there with you, but Muddy's sick, but when Muddy get well, you know, I, I got to go back with Muddy. But Muddy never did get back into playing, and he passed yeah. away. So I stayed with Maddie Slim, like, from then on, for like 13 years. Wow. Yeah, with side man, playing rhythm guitar. He taught me a lot. Gave me a two-minute solo. I could aim at him, gonna give me a two-minute solo. Oh, great. <laughs> Man, he make, made me play, so I didn't know that he's paid off, you know. All of a sudden, I almost got good as he did. He stopped giving me so many. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, so I've been doing my own thing ever since 1995, you know. Um, did some stuff with the Rolling Stones and. Muscle yeah. Shoals? Muscle Shoals? No, nah, we did a video oh. at the checkerboard lounge, the old checkerboard lounge, 43rd Street sure. in Atlanta, which was Buddy Guy's club then. He, you know, he moved, got a big club. But I got a chance to jam with those guys, we got a video, and uh, did, did some stuff with those guys. But I, you know, back in 1982, I think, or 83. But you know, I never got it, had contact with none of those guys, the Rolling Stone. Never see none of those guys. But, Two years ago, they asked us to do a song, a whole CD for the Rolling Stone. Chicago playing mm -hmm. the Stones, yeah. Stone, played the Stone. So I got a chance to, I got a chance to play two songs on it. Cool. Yeah, a couple of us, you know. All the rest of them played one, but the guys playing on there with Mick Jagger. So I did this song with the Rolling Stone, you know. Which they didn't want to make Chess famous, you know. You're not, you Steve, but you're not Dennis. Dennis playing all of them. No. Okay. Okay, I'm going to count it off for you, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Come on. 
Try.